Okay, well, Christmas is coming, and uh, there's been a lot of chatter in the evangelical Twitter sphere. Hey, who's on Twitter? Caleb is on Twitter. Caleb is on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, okay. You're on Twitter. So much to learn, aren't they? Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of chatter on, on Twitter this last week about the evils of Christmas, uh, and Santa Claus in particular. This, this year, the popular whipping boy has been Santa. And uh, <clears throat> so you get... You get guys like uh, John Stevens, the guy who heads up the FIEC, getting quite right wing in some of his comments, sort of right at the Daily Mail, which is enough, you know? And uh, yeah, he's been really getting quite unusual things, occasionally comment. But he's been, he's been saying some things recently about fundamentalist Santafarianism. Uh, <laughs> that's helpful, well done. Um, so yeah. he's the biggest, the biggest outreach opportunity of the year, let's spend it whipping Santa. Uh, no, I did, I did sort of phrase a reply to him that was exceptionally witty and exceptionally cutting. I thought you can't post that, so well, bl I blotted it out. But uh, it's a bit of a long goal, really. People pointing out, for example, that Santa is an anagram of Satan. That's always a helpful one. Yes, thank you very much. That'll really help us with our outreach this Christmas. And then John Piper, of all people. Of all people, John Piper. I know he's getting old and stuff, but he's been really sort of slamming in parents who, you know, how can they possibly trust Christ if they teach their children about Santa? Which is, it's a bit extreme. You know? mm. <clears throat> I thought, well, hang on now. If, as Christians, we want to sort of cut the crap out of Christmas, maybe we should start on our own doorstep. Because we <coughs> put an awful lot of rubbish into the Christmas story. So, Santa Fe. Oh! Santa Fe! It's there! It's there! Santa Fe. Uh, here's a good challenge just for fun. How much of what you see in this picture of the traditional nativity scene is born out by the biblical effect? Um, the baby. There's a sky. There was a baby, there was a mum and a dad, star. there was a star involved, Angel. and that was what it looked like, so this is a question, because that's been a debate. Angel? <laughs> oh, the, oh, the major? Mm. Yeah. 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 Palm trees in the background? <laughs> no. It's not so deep. No. Um, There's <coughs> a straw? Was there straw? Probably. Oh. No, did they have straw? There's some sort of bed. Did they have like... It wouldn't have been wheat yeah. straw. Palm trees. No, not palm no. trees. They didn't have palm trees. They've well, got, they wouldn't have had palm trees because it was palm Little drummer boys. They've got... Uh, rumpa pum pum. Yeah. No. They've got wheat <laughs> straw lids in the top um, of the stable. There's a shepherd's crook. A, a stable. Did somebody say stable? They've got wheat straw lids. Was, was, was there a stable? Yeah, but there's wheat what, straw lids. Was there a stable? No. Yes, but it says no. nothing. Not in the way that we think. And did the shepherds bring lambs? <laughs> Don't know, they bought the pop by the look of it. Well, they <laughs> left their sheep in the fields, okay? <laughs> that one's blue. <laughs> that one's blue. <laughs> what one's blue? The shepherd is He's blue. Cold. The other one's green. The shepherd is a wise man. No, that's a shepherd. No, it's green. Look, the wise men on. on the camel. That's very interesting. In this picture, there's a witch. There are shepherds on camels as well. <laughs> no, no, it's the wise men. There's a monkey. There's three of them. Was there three of them? Because what happens is that memories of time past get bound up with what we take the scriptures to be saying, and we don't want to have the cobwebs dusted off our misinterpretation of scripture. Yeah. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is where it becomes an issue, isn't it? So here's an illustration, okay? And it's, it's just well, by way of appeal. We, we've got at least three proper jewelers in the town, yeah? This very small town. At least three proper jewelers, by which I mean people who design and craft items for decorative purposes, the gold and silver and precious stones and, and all that, and they sell these things to the affluent public. Those sorts of proper jewellers, not, you know, Simons. I wouldn't want to say that, <laughs> but you said it. <laughs> so these affluent people, they then bring their treasured things back to the jeweller from time to time to be clean. That, that was a mystery to me, I didn't, I didn't 
Perhaps they have dusters in their own house. I don't know. But but they bring these things back to be cleaned, right? So oh, I clean, you know, I, said, oh, I clean it. Take a glass. And pour some coke in it. Dip it in. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, how does it work? How complicated is this? Yeah, I shake it up. I know it's terrible. Um, but <laughs> the thing is this, and the thing I'm getting at is this. When their treasured precious things are treasured, they get used. And when they get used, they pick up a patina of stuff that accrues and sticks to the surface of their treasure, which distorts the light that falls on it. And they need to be cleaned, and, and that stuff's got to be removed. The true character of the treasure is to be evident and plainly seen. And the value of those things is not diminished in the process, but enhanced. Yeah? And so it is with most of our treasured, most used, most loved, most heavily patinated passages of scripture. Mm. So it is with the ones about Christmas. Now our vision of them sometimes needs to be taken out and polished. The stuff that's got picked up and stuck to their surface can be removed and our treasure's greater glory can be more clearly seen. A clearer vision results from that sort of process, not a reduced one. Mm. 